And that's the most common misconception that trans women even transition to have access to straight men. Who would go and go through hormone therapy, surgery, which is extremely painful, and like be ridiculed by society just to appease men? I'm gonna be completely honest at the moment. I shouldn't be laughing at this because it's such a serious issue. What are some common misconceptions around transgender people? Which oh, I just get into the chat. The one common misconception that is so dominant would be that we're hypersexual. All trans women are sex workers. You know, like, oh, you freaky. The LGBTQI community in general, like, we're super hypersexual, but we're actually not. It's just the narratives that have been built around our identities. Men only know trans women from porn, so that's the lens that they view us even in the real world. And that's why even as to the previous question about dating, men, when they come at me, they come at me like super, they just don't want to see me. We're not fetishes. Like, we're not toes. I'm a human being now, like, like, yeah? The way you emote, I emote too, child. We're just gay men. There's also that misconception that trans people are just, trans women are just gay men who want to be extra. Like, like you know, like the thing of like, we. I'm not explaining like, it's such a. We're confused. We don't know who we are. I think like most people don't know who they are. And trans people are some of the most self-defined people because we're not existing out of like um predetermined structure of how we're supposed to live our lives. Like literally this is like some women were made, but me, myself, I'd like to think that I was created. The other misconception that people have with trans women <sighs> mm. that we treat you. There's an idea that trans women solely exist or our existence is just to appease men or appease the male gaze. Please, I do not have the time to play the beautiful with death. And that's the most common misconception that trans women even transition to have access to straight men. This is not like one of the comedy shows that you watch with misogyny and all that stuff where they dress like, well, this is not that love. Who would go and go through hormone therapy, surgery, which is extremely painful, and like be ridiculed by society just to appease men? We are women. We don't need to trick you and don't put yourself on that pedestal Think that we need to trick you and your pockets. Your small ass pockets. Do not even try. Do you love your body? Do I love my body? Huh. <laughs> I love my body. I really do. And I think it's only going to get better. I'm learning to love it. I'm learning to override certain mechanics that have been drilled into me since I was like a baby like certain ideas of what my body is supposed to look like you know all these external ideas that are capitalistically driven just with medically transitioning and becoming more comfortable in my body I could say 80% of my body I'm very comfortable and happy with there might be a few things I might alter in the future, but I am very comfortable in my body. I love my body. And I've learned to appreciate my body because it's been through a lot. I always had to think I had to always reconsider my body because like it's not what I exactly wanted to be. But for me to be comfortable and mentally okay, I had to love my body. And there's always a solution. <laughs> It's always a solution and that solution always works for me. I've chosen to love my body. For me, even just transitioning was an act of self-love. I'm learning to restructure that and make it comfortable for me, suitable for me. So I 
I'm learning to love my body. There are days where I wish I could change a few things, but overall, I love my body. Is gender reassignment surgery necessary to be transgender? No. That's the thing that we're moving more into it with the conversations around what gender means. Not every trans person's journey looks the same. Some trans people get on hormone therapy and with all the physical effects that happen from hormone therapy, they are fine. That is where they are, that they're comfortable, that's their final, if you say, if there's an ending, that's their ending point. Whereas for some trans women to feel more comfortable in their bodies or trans men, um, they go further to have um, gender reassignment surgery, but it's not necessary for everyone. Remember, like we are, we are at a point where um, transness can also be gender fluidity, you know. And I know trans women who don't want to do it. Who don't want to? They are okay with a penis, and then or let me not even say it because that's me outing them. Just okay with their body and okay with how they body functions for themselves, and that is called. Fluidity. I was socialized to learn the two binary systems that is man woman and just because it was created like that doesn't mean that we can't create a new social structure for how we understand our bodies like some people go through hormone therapy and they become comfortable with their how their bodies look some people love the fact that our bodies are not conventional bodies and that's also very valid and some trans people want to have bodies that look more or less like cis cisgendered people's bodies and that just shows where i also lie i am part of the group where like i'm not completely a woman but i am a woman inside and you know what i mean and the physical part the physical part is just like airbrushing you know what i mean it's airbrushing the honest part is inside we're actually starting to understand that like it's not necessary to be anything because like the spirit is the most important aspect the bodies are just here to carry us and to allow us and all due respect we, we have to honor our bodies but it's like what matters more is being driven and being in touch with your higher self but the surgery is also necessary for cats <laughs> for cats it's necessary like that's a, that's a need. That's, <laughs> you know when they say once, literally I can drop everything right now. If they say, can't you get any bitch, I don't do my toilet. How new it? No. So, no. Pantalahenya. Mm. What do you think of the proposed changes to Home Affairs gendered ID numbers provision? Brilliant. I stand. I'm here for it. Like, it's time. Let's do this. What is it? Is that <laughs> When we look back in time, ID numbers used to even specify race. I don't know if they still do that. They used to specify your race and your gender. So I think they did remove the racial aspect. So they basically scrapping gender markers like um, man, woman. There's, you're going to choose if you even want to be classed according to those kind of definitions because there's also an option where you have just your ex and that's it's just you're not participating in those kind of definitions i personally just feel like it's gonna be a relief because right now even just the process of changing your gender marker is so long it takes around if you're lucky it'll take three months but for most it takes six months to a year just to get your new id with your updated gender so i think if we had that option available of non-specified or a randomized id number It'll just remove all the clutter. All the clutter from having to go to home affairs and having to change your gender marker and have being asked invasive questions. You know when they call me from like, let's say like, um, I don't know, the bank or something. I mean, they're like, Mr. Mr. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's not my ID. So I'm just like, and you know my voice, hi, hi. They're like, no, we're looking for Mr. Gadel. This is her. <laughs> this is her. Hey, hey, her name is Mr. Gatech. Okay, wrong number then. So, honestly, I think it's so important. I think it's just gonna change. It, it goes back to that previous question I was answering. It's like it's gonna change how we're socialized, how we talk to each other, how we respect each other, and 
I can't wait for people who come after me to actually get to enjoy relationships, like beautiful, wholesome relationships. Right now, there's people who may have fears that also that might remove their own identities when in reality it's just adding on. People will still have the option of male or female, it's just that now we're adding on to that. It's so inclusive beyond even the conversation of like man, woman, trans woman. It's like it's, I don't have to participate. It's like that's, no, be like spirit, brilliant. Do you have any words of advice to other trans individuals or someone struggling in their gender identity? Don't compare yourself and don't rush your process. Sometimes for some people it takes longer for them to discover whether they are trans or even for some people to discover that they are gay or bisexual or anything. It takes time for certain people to, to reach that self-discovery. Please put yourself first and never ever, ever let anyone tell you how you should look, how you're not woman enough, how they can still call you boy because they've known you for so long, how they can make jokes about calling you a boy, or how they can be like, oh, you could be such a beautiful boy. Stuff like that, you know? Don't let those little triggers get to a point where you don't believe that you are woman enough. Ask a question ask questions, watch the YouTube stories. Luckily, we live in a world where we're not so isolated. You can be going through something, but you can just, and then you have a new best friend. Have safe spaces, have people around you who are safe spaces, people who do not exploit you. Have people around you who are safe spaces, who have your best interests at heart. And sometimes those people could be family, could be friends instead of family. It's a hard road. It's a hard road and I'm still on that road. I'm still having it hard and I'm still having thoughts that compromise a lot of work that I've done for myself. But with that being said, you have to keep on going. No one can live that life but you and God puts you on this planet for that specific reason. And like, just know that it's possible for you and you are enough already. You are enough, like, you are the whole lotus flower of um, like, you know, embody it. At home affairs, I was asking, what are your chakra colors? What are your colors? <laughs> you know, like, it's like a magenta, it's like, what are you? <laughs> That's where we're gonna get to, magenta. like, you know? Like, I love that. Hallelujah. Done. <laughs>